Okay, g'day all. Welcome to another video on a bit of Linux and assembly. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the shifting instructions. Yeah, so shifting the bits of a binary number to the left is the same as multiplying it by a power of 2, and shifting it to the right is the same as dividing by a power of 2. And the reason why we use shifts sometimes instead of multiplication and division by powers of 2 is a uh, shift tends to be a faster instruction. So multiplication on a modern CPU is pretty quick, uh, but division is really, really slow. And uh, the shifting instructions are faster than both of them. And you might, of course, yeah, you might already be used to uh, multiplication and division and just the shifting bits in general from uh, C++ and other C-based languages where we've got these uh, double chevron uh, operators. Yeah, the shift left and shift right operators. Uh, C++ is actually pretty clever. It's a type-safe language, and it's going to pick the correct right shift for you. Um, we'll see in a moment that uh, assembly is not type-safe, and you've got to know which shift uh, to use, depending on whether your data is signed or not, uh, when you're dividing. And something else that might come up, it doesn't come up often, but um, division with a shift and a negative number actually doesn't round the same way that uh, integer division with, say, div or idiv uh, rounds. Uh, division with a shift actually truncates toward negative infinity, yeah, whereas with idiv it truncates toward zero. It might come up. Uh, okay, so onto the instructions themselves. There's three instructions that we're going to look at. Uh, SHL, which is shift left, SHR, which is shift right, and there's another version of shift right called uh, SAR, or shift arithmetic right. Uh, each of the instructions takes two operands. This is Intel syntax up here. Uh, you'd obviously swap your operands around if you're using AT&T, and we'll see a bit of AT&T in a, in a minute. I've got um, a couple of examples with Intel and AT&T. Uh, but it takes two operands. Uh, the first operand can be memory or a register, and the second can be either an 8-bit immediate value or uh, CL. Yeah, so if you want to shift by a variable amount, your only option is the CL, uh, the low 8 bits of RCX. And what they do is that the, uh, the bits in op1 are shifted left or right by the amount that we specify in the second operand, and the results, the shifted bits, are saved back into op1 again. Uh, all of these instructions also update the carry flag, and the carry flag at the end of a shift uh, actually equals the last bit shifted out of the register. Yeah, so if you're shifting to the left, um, what you'll be doing is sort of shifting bits off the left-hand end of your register, and the first thing they do, they come off the end of the register, they go straight into the carry flag. Uh, but after that, they're just discarded. You know, the carry flag can only hold one um, last bit that was shifted off. And likewise, if you're shifting to the right, then the carry flag will be the bits that come out uh, of the right-hand side of your register. Okay, the difference between SHR and SAR is um, with SHR, zeros enter from the left-hand side, and with SAR, it's the sign bit that comes in from the left. Uh, so basically, what you want to do, if you're trying to divide a signed number, you want SAR, and if you're trying to divide an unsigned number, you want SHR. Um, the trouble with SHR for signed numbers is that if you've got a negative number, say negative 5, um, the sign bit over the very left-hand side is what makes it negative. Um, that bit will be set to 1. But if we shift right um, with SHR, a 0 will come in on that left-hand side. So, you know, the sign bit won't be set anymore. Uh, you'll divide a negative number by a power of 2, and you'll end up with uh, some gigantic positive number, which will be surprising. <laughs> And wrong. Uh, yeah, so basically, if you're doing um, signed division, you probably want SAR. Uh, if op2 is it, yeah, there is actually another uh, version of these. If the second operand is 1, then you'll get a special version of um, the shifts, and the overflow flag will be set as well as the carry. Okay, so what are they used for? Well, we're going to have a bit of an animation in a second and a challenge at the end. Uh, but this is just a little warm-up to the challenge. You can use them to mask bits. Uh, so say you want the uh, bits 5, 6, 7, and 8 from uh, EAX. You want to know what number those four bits represent. Uh, well, you could move those bits to position 0 in EAX and uh, then mask out everything else. Yeah, so this AND down here with EAX and OXF, that's a hexadecimal number. 
which is nothing but four ones. Yeah, so that's going to mask out everything in EAX except for the lowest four bits. Might be useful. Um, alrighty, on to a couple of examples of uh, multiplication and division mostly. Um, SHL, EAX and 5 is going to multiply EAX by 2 to the power of 5. Uh, I didn't mention before, but there is actually an arithmetic shift left as well, SAL. Uh, but it's identical. It's functionally exactly the same as SHL, so it, you know, it doesn't tend to get much air time. Um, anyway, if you want to multiply by a power of 2, then uh, you just change this number here. So SHL, EAX, and 5 multiplies EAX by 2 to the 5. Uh, if you want it multiplied by, say, 2 to the 7, oh, you would just do SHL, EAX, and 7. Easy as that. Um, SHR, and it doesn't matter if it's uh, signed or unsigned as well, with shift left. Okay, SHR and uh, RDX and CL is going to divide RDX by 2 to the power of CL. Uh, but that is an unsigned division there. Yeah, that's unsigned because I've used SHR. Uh, whereas SAR is for signed division. So EAX might be a negative number. This is still going to work out. Uh, SAR, EAX, and 3 uh, is signed division of EAX by 2 to the power of 3. Or uh, EAX equals EAX divided by 8, in other words. Um, or likewise, you might like this little trick. This is classic. Um, SAR, BL, and 8 is just going to paste all of BL's sign bit across BL. Yeah, so SAR copies the sign bit. Yeah, the sign bit comes in on the left. Um, so if our if our shift right is uh, big enough, we'll actually paste the sign bit across the entire register. Okay, so in that instance there, what would happen is uh, if BL was a negative number to begin with, it would become negative 1, and uh, if it was a positive number, then it would become 0. Um, down here I've got AT and T versions of exactly the same thing, so this is identical functionally to uh, the Intel syntax above. Yeah, you just got to have your um, data size suffixes on the end of your mnemonics. You've got a dollar in front of your immediate values and a percent in front of your registers. And uh, oh yeah, gas is clever enough to figure out the data size if you leave it off. Sometimes, yeah, if it's a register there. Anyway, that's uh, Intel versus AT and T. So whichever one you want to use, it's all good. Um, okay, but onto a little animation. So I thought I might just put this in uh, at the end before we look at the challenge because um, I don't know. Some people might be visual learners, so maybe this will help. This is um, I'm going to click through these slides pretty quickly in the hopes that it looks like a little cartoon. Um, it's <laughs> it's not a very good cartoon, but yeah, you'll you'll see. Um, this is AL just here. Uh, these eight bits. The carry flag down here is zero. Um, this is the most significant bit over here on the left hand side of AL and this is the least significant bit over here on the right hand side. Okay, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to animate one shift at a time. Yeah, and we'll just shift nine times in a row I think. So let's have a look. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, all done. Um, okay, so you might want to watch that a few times if you're not used to shifting. If you are used to shifting, it would have made for a pretty boring movie. But <laughs> anyway, uh, what you should have seen just then is um, the bits marching to the left. Yeah, they march to the left because we're using shift left. Um, it wasn't... Um, this is the result of shifting the original number yeah, to the left to 9. Yeah, I don't want you to think that each time I was shifting you know, from the previous result. Each time I'm shifting from the original number, I hope that makes sense. Uh, but you should have, you should have seen um, the bits moving towards the left, and as they come out the left-hand side, um, they go straight to the carry flag, and after that, they're discarded. Yeah, so if there's a 1 just here, and we do shift left, uh, it'll go straight to the carry flag. Uh, but if we do shift left 2, uh, then it'll go past the carry flag and be popped off the end. Yeah, it'll be lost. Discarded, in other words. <laughs> And uh, SHR, shift right, is exactly the same, only the bits would march to the right-hand side. Yeah, and as they come out the right-hand end here, they would go straight to the carry flag. But then, after that, once again, they'd be discarded. And the only difference between SHR and SAL is that if this first bit here on the left, or I should say the seventh bit, I guess, or the, the eighth bit, uh, if this most significant bit here was 1, indicating that we actually had a negative number, then uh, SAR, instead of filling the uh, register from the left with zeros, um, we'd actually get that sign bit copied. Yeah. 
Okay, well I hope that was helpful. Let's move on to the challenge. Alright, this is harder than it sounds. Uh, if you've not done it before, but I want you to make a function in assembly called reverse bits. Uh, only if you've got time. I mean, there's no pressure here. <laughs> um, it's got to take a byte as a parameter, or an unsigned char, in other words, in uh, C++ speak. Uh, it's got to return the exact mirror, or reverse of the bits. So 01101011 should come out. 11010110. Yeah, exactly the mirror, or reverse. Uh, this is the prototype just here, and uh, you can use any technique that you like. I'm going to be using um, shifting in the Boolean instructions, just because that's what we've been talking about. But if you know about loops and labels, then you can use some of that. might help you out. <laughs> uh, if you're really interested in some very, very clever ways to um, do exactly this, uh, you might want to check out the BitHacks page. There's just beautiful tricks there. Uh, much, much cleverer than what I'm about to do. And the next slide is a hint, so if you don't want the hint, you might want to skip it. Um, here's my hint, so this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, in uh, plain old English. So I'm going to repeat these three lines seven times. I'm going to copy the rightmost bit from the input to the output. I'm going to shift the input right one. I'm going to shift the output left one. And I'll repeat that seven times, and once I've done that seven times, I'm going to copy the final bit from the input to the output. Yeah, there you go. So that's what I'm just about to do. Uh, there is more than that, you know, more than one way to do this. Uh, I thought also, just before we get started, if you wanted to have a go yourself, uh, it might help if I remind you that the the character uh, parameter will be passed to us in the register DIL, DIL, yeah, the low eight bits of the uh, RDI register. All right, give it a shot, but uh, I'm going to move to my virtual machine, so I'll see you there. Okay, I'm back again. Um, here's my little front end for this project. Uh, I thought it might be nice to print out the bits. So uh, I've copied the print bits function from the last shoot. Uh, only I changed it to unsigned char instead of int. Uh, but all I'm going to do is set an unsigned char q to, say, 78, any number, and print out its bits. Then we're going to try and reverse the bits with a function that we'll write uh, in assembly. And then I'm going to print out the bits again. And hopefully they'll be mirrored. So if we come over to assembly, nothing much is happening at the moment. But all I've got is the um, yeah entry point for that reverse bits function, and as a comment at the top, I've written out what it is I I hope to do. Uh, just as a little reminder, I've also got that uh, we're returning to AL, and it's an unsigned char that we're given as input, and it's going to be passed to us by um, C++ in DIL, or the low eight bits of the um, RDI register. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, there's a billion ways. Um, I'm just going to do it one way, not a particularly good way, but I think it should be instructional anyway. Uh, copy the first bit on the right from the input to the output. Now, in C++, you could just do, so we've got something like um, uh, AL, we could say AL equals um, DIL and 1 or AL or equals, we could do that in uh, C++ to copy the first bit on the right hand side from DIL to AL, but it's not going to work in assembly because you can't do these kinds of, you know, multiple operations in a single step. So this AND here is going to be one step for us in assembly and that OR is going to be another step. And I think the best way to do this is to use another register. So I might use CL for that. Um, on MOV from uh, DIL into CL, so that's just going to copy, uh, D, uh, copy DIL to CL. Uh, then I'll perform the AND, so AND, CL, and 1. Mask out all of the bits in CL except for that first bit. So now CL is only going to be whatever the first bit on the right was of DIL. And then we can OR... Okay, I don't have to clear... Um, RAX, but I'm gonna anyway. Yeah, we want RAX to be zero, but in the end we will have gone through all of the bits in AL, so it won't matter. But uh, or AL and CL. Um, okay, so this is mask out all but the first bit, and this is copy it to AL. 
Okay, so AL is going to be our output, and so far we've copied one bit from uh, DIL to uh, AL. And the next thing that we want to do is uh, shift DIL to the right, so sure, uh, DIL and 1. Uh, DIL to the next bit. And at the same time, shul AL to the left. Yeah, that should just about do it. So we've done that, we've done that. Um, we're not up to copy the final bit because we've got to repeat that seven times. Now you could just use a loop, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is just copy and paste. So copy, paste, paste. That's three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times. Exactly the same code repeated seven times. Um, what I've done here is really an unrolled loop. Yeah, I unrolled the loop. You could use a loop, but I've used an unrolled loop. Um, okay, but the final thing that we've got to do is uh, do the copy, but we don't want to do these shifts. Yeah, so I might just scroll down again. And for the final time, we'll just go from the uh, mov cl, dil, uh, all the way down to the or. I'll copy and paste. And hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully... Uh, by that point, we should have reversed all of the bits yeah, by copying them to AL and uh, shifting it in the opposite direction to uh, DIL. Let's have a bit of a look. So, make. Okay, that's a good sign. It's starting to starting to look promising. Run me. Um, yeah, there we go. So it looks reversed to me. So that first one there is what Q was initially set to. I don't know what it was, 58 or 70 something. And uh, the lower one is after reversing its bits, so that looks like the reverse to me. I might just um, come back in here and do another few couple of tests. Uh, so one thing that I want to know is I want to know that it can reverse um, 254. Yeah, so 254 is nothing but a bunch of ones and a single zero bit. So if it reverses that, it's doing pretty well. Let's have a look. Yeah, no worries. It put the zero on the other end. Good stuff. All right, the other one that I might want to test is um, 128, yeah, 128. So 128 in binary is just a 1 over the very uh, left-hand side and zeros for the rest of it. So let's see if it reverses that. This is going to be cool. Hey, it did. There you go. Okay, so it's not proof that it works for all 256 byte um, bit configurations, but, you know, I think it does. Anyway, that's about all I wanted to say, so thanks for watching. See you later. See if I can stop this thing.